The international break is over and Liverpool return back to winning ways as they beat Everton 2-0 at Anfield in the first Merseyside derby of the season. In today's video, we will discuss some of the big talking points from the game, whilst also going over some of the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours and discuss why the club have been sparked into immediate negotiations. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well before we do get into today's video as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Virgil van Dijk has remained a key fixture of Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool despite the team's regeneration. Jordan Henderson, Genie Wijnaldum, James Milner and Fabinho were all previous players in front of van Dijk. It may be doing them a disservice, but Liverpool's new crop of midfielders arguably have a higher ceiling. While they aren't quite as effective as their predecessors just yet, Van Dijk says the incomers have been outstanding and he's enjoying the different vibe around the team. Speaking to TNT Sports after Liverpool beat Everton 2-0, the captain attributed some of the Reds' good early season form to their pre-season. He said, We had a short break, then we came back. Van Dijk, who admitted to feeling drained and frustrated over last season, explained, Pre-season was very good. We started in Germany, proper training camp, then the commercial tour and it worked pretty well. I'm glad it worked out like that. We definitely sense a different vibe, different energy in the club. There has been a transition, of course, but also in the way we play. We have different players, we have different qualities. We try to adapt a little in football. I think it's working quite well. Liverpool won't become imperious overnight and plenty of the players are still inexperienced. None of Dominic Sabozlai, Alexis McAllister or Ryan Gravenberg had played a Merseyside derby before Saturday afternoon. The relative inexperience hasn't hindered Liverpool too much so far, and Van Dijk's outlook is positive on the summer signings. The guys coming in have been outstanding in my opinion. McAllister may be in position, I'm not sure he really was, he really wants to play, but he has the quality to play anywhere in the midfield. The yards he's going each and every game is great. So Bosley is a different breed, his energy is keep on running, he wants the ball at times, he counter presses, and that's what we want. Curtis Jones is doing very well too, Ryan started his first derby, it's something to be excited about as a Liverpool fan, long may it continue but I think it's key in finding consistency. Van Dijk himself had a return to form too, with some questioning his abilities last season and next up for Liverpool is Toulouse at Anfield on Thursday night. Nat Phillips' future has already been decided and it does not lie at Celtic. Speaking exclusively to Football Insider, Celtic expert Frank McAvenny claimed that the club will send Phillips back to Liverpool in January following his half-season at Parkhead. Celtic signed the centre-back on a temporary basis late on in the summer transfer window after injuries to Cameron Carter-Vickers, Stephen Welsh and new signing Mayok Nokawaki. But Phillips has had to deal with injury problems of his own and his game time has been limited. Liam Scales has been filling in at centre-half after spending last season out on loan at Aberdeen and has impressed fans and the manager with his performances. But McAvenny suggested there is likely to be a defensive shake-up in the second half of the campaign. He said, Phillips will go back in January, so that is when the likes of Gustav Lagerbalk will have to step up to the mark. Celtic will have contacted Liverpool about Phillips and say that they will not buy him. I think now Awoki and Carter Vickers will be the centre-halves, which means that Scales can challenge Greg Taylor for left-back or play centre-back. The more games Liam is getting, the better, so it's becoming so it looks good at Celtic at the moment. It's just a shame we are out of the League Cup because the team are just getting stronger and stronger. The Reds returned back to action after the international break with a win in the Merseyside derby thanks to yet another Mo Salah brace. In this part of the video, we will discuss the five big talking points from the game. Getting used to the left. The two most unfamiliar names on the team shoot came as left back and left side of the midfield. Costa Simicas making his first league start of the campaign and Ryan Gravenberg making his full league debut for the Reds. Bizarrely, despite having signed well over three years ago, this was only Simicas's second time playing in the Merseyside derby. The Greek defender had a pretty steady start, making some decent moves forward, interchanging well on counter attacks and making a good few defensive interventions too but there were a few poor crosses, a few too many fouls. As for the Dutch midfielder, his movement on the ball, turning away from pressure and his ability to win the ball back in the middle was excellent, but he should have two goals in two league games. After hitting the bar from close range last time out, here he opted against attacking at the far post when he would have had a tap in, learn from those lessons fast and he'll be a huge threat. Both faded in the second half, which was a testament to the lack of action as much as the team's flat showing and both were subbed on the hour mark. 
And yet the reason of wing pact and the opportunity of those two, it was the third member of the left flank, Luis Diaz, who twice took on Ashley Young and twice was skived down, yellow cards each time and was unread accordingly. With Andy Robertson out until the end of the year, Curtis Jones having been suspended and Thiago still absent, this is a trio we might see on that side of the pitch a lot more in 2023. A 12.30 kickoff out of the way. Last season was often noted that we fared terribly in the early kickoffs, failing to win any of our six at 12.30pm. That ignores two factors though, few teams have to play them as regularly as we do, and the Reds were garbage in a lot of the games last term, regardless of the kickoff time. Even so, this time around, it's two wins from two after beating Wolves recently and now Everton. Despite that upturn in points, it was a fairly dismal atmosphere for too long in the derby, something long noted in the early Premier League matches and not just at our ground. Meanwhile, it's also worth noting Sean Dyche is the eighth Everton manager to face Jurgen Klopp during his Liverpool tenure, such as their inability to find a suitable boss and the instability of the club overall. Finally, we saw a fifth red card in Liverpool's league matches this season, and the first not for us, which was a nice change. Lots of shots, not enough guile. It's fair to say it was a tough watch in spells and that the shot stats reinforced this. The Reds racked up 15 shots in just over an hour, with just a single one of those on target and nothing to trouble Jordan Pickford at all. Far too many of them were taken from improbable range and angles, Dominic Sabozla and Trent Alexander-Arnold with several in the first half, and Luis Diaz doing likewise in the second. Salah probably went the closest with a curler from the right edge of the box, but even that was over, wide, never heading in. It is of course tough to break down 10 men who are defensive-minded even before they receive a red card, but this time Liverpool know they weren't quick enough and weren't intensive enough with their passing and movement in the final third. Crossing and set pieces were also inaccurate from both flanks. And yet enough pressure usually does the trick. One too many moments of poor decision making leads to an error of judgement somewhere along the line and this time it was a handball and a penalty. Harvey Elliott and Darwin Nunes, both second half substitutes, improved the Reds in terms of the creativity and incision. Salah's productivity doesn't stop. It wasn't Mo's best game of the season, but it's effective for this level to be through at the roof, albeit thanks to the penalty spot and Darwin Nunes selfless in the time around. This match marked four home Premier League games in a row, which he has scored, and in the last 13 home league matches, he has found the back of the net of 12 of them, notching up 14 goals in that time. Not content with just bagging, he's also a creator these days. In those games of the 13-match run in which he didn't score, Salah did assist someone instead, Roberto Firmino's late equaliser against Aston Villa. The number 11 remains an incredible source of goals and points for the Reds, and even when not at his best, can still prove a match winner. With 105 goals, the Egyptian now has more goals at Anfield than Steven Gerrard and Kenny Daglish. Briefly, table toppers. It's only October and others play afterwards, and so we're not getting carried away, but the three points took Liverpool to the top of the league after last season will absolutely take that. Given the upcoming matches, we must now give ourselves the mini target of winning out through to the international break. Do that, and by the time we face Manchester City in another 12.30pm kickoff, we should be high on confidence and ready to really test ourselves, seeing just how we've come with our summer rebuild. Then perhaps we'll get our best indication of what kind of season lies ahead for Liverpool. Liverpool fans, what are your final thoughts from the derby? Let me know them down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.